Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our weekly show. We call it Tournament Horse Racing. It's presented to you by Broke Eyes Handicapping. Here's what we've done. We've taken the horse racing calendar. We've broken it up into four separate tournaments throughout the year, and each of those tournaments consists of 10 individual racing days, and that's actually what you're watching tonight is one of those individual racing days. The racing days consist of four races that we've chosen at one of the top tracks from around the country, and each of our horse players is going to go ahead and make a mythical $2 win and place bet in each of the four races that we select for that day. We're actually headed over to Parks Racing today in Pennsylvania. That's enough about the tournament. Let me go ahead and introduce you to our horse players. And I'm going to go ahead and start out in no particular order, just a little bit to the north of me. He's in Menifee, California. He's actually a good friend of mine as well. Steve Newsom, how have you been, my friend? How's everything going this week? Oh, not too bad, Rich. How about yourself? Eh, not too bad, exactly. You know, yeah, it's yeah. Friday night. I I still do work on Saturdays now, but uh, yeah. you know, got, got exactly. a big football weekend coming up. Yeah, you know? football weekends exactly. Seahawks every weekend. got Atlanta. Maybe we get our second win. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, nice opportunity for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, from, from a Rams fan, Falcons are a little tougher than they look. All right, we're going to go ahead and move just a little bit to the south of me, uh, and in Temecula, California. He's our second horse player. He's also a good friend of mine, Joe English. How are you doing tonight? Doing well, Rich. Can't complain. How y'all doing? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Right. Last but not least, all the way across the country on the East Coast in Staten Island, New York, he's our final horse player, horse player number three, and uh, again, a very good friend of mine, Ray Torado. How's life treating you, my friend? I'm um, doing good this week. Doing good. Yeah. Getting a little chilly here, but you know we're, we're hanging in there. Good. You know, a little chilly. We're actually heading back into a heat wave out here in Southern California once again. So oh, we're, boy, we're, yeah. Yeah, we're going to see triple-digit temperatures here in the area that me, Steve, and Joe live in. Mm. 51 sounds like a dream right now. All right. Uh, without further ado, we are going to go ahead. What I'll do is I'll start sharing my screen with you, and I'll show you what happened last week uh, on, here on Tournament Horse Racing. Go ahead and bring that up. Actually... That's the racing form for tonight's uh, event, which is, again, at Parks in Pennsylvania. And we are going to shift out to Ooh, Toronto, man. Canada. And I know, yeah, that one, that was a close one. And uh, as you see there, those are the results from Woodbine Racing out there in Canada. Just a couple of dollars separating the top three. I, I hear Ray going, ugh, yeah, it wasn't just a couple of dollars for me because uh, it, blank. Was, it was a rever reversal from the previous week when Ray was the only one to score at Kentucky Downs, uh, this time Ray puts up the blank, uh, me, <laughs> Steve, and Joe uh, fighting it out at the wire, and as you see there, you put the check mark next to my name, uh, just a couple of dollars separates me from Steve and Joe, and then we will take a peek at quarter number four, which still shows Ray in first place, he's got uh, $18.42, and then you see that me, Steve, and Joe uh, closely bunched right behind him there, you can go ahead and put my name over there. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and start taking a look at what's the racing card for this evening, which again, <laughs> Parks Racing uh, down there in Pennsylvania. We're going to start off in race number nine. They're going five furlongs on the turf. It is the appropriately named Turf Monster Stakes, grade three. Purse is $300,000. It's for three-year-olds and upward. And your morning line favorite, you know, kind of a tasty price right there, three to one. That's right. <laughs> Trained by Michael Moore and ridden by Andy Hernandez. Again, three to one on the Parks Morning Line. And Steve, as I mentioned earlier to you, you're going to get to go ahead and kick us off and go first. Who do you like? All right. Well, I'm, I, I'm not on the favorites, so that's that's good. Um, I like the seven. Boats are rocking. Ooh, yeah. There you are, Navy friend. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you, got, you got 10 to 1 on there uh, um, I don't know anything about the jockey or the trainer But they won a couple of races together And 40% in five tries So, yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> Horse has got eight wins on turf It's got uh, uh, two, two, two and oh And four tries at the distance And uh, it's also won Want to race uh, once last race here on the uh, or not the last race is one one once on this track. So 
So yeah, I'm gonna go with the go with the seven here. I think I like the shorter distance too. All right, and Steve, you'll be handing off right back to me uh, tonight. Right. So I'm gonna go right after you, and I'm up here on number four. Nothing better. Uh, trained by uh, well, either George or Jorge Duarte, and again, that goes to show you how much I know about this race. However, I do know the name of the jockey, and this is Luis Saez. Uh, the horse, um, as you see here, um, by the results that have been coming up, really, you know, going back a, a little bit over a year at races that are just about this distance, right next door uh, in New Jersey over at Monmouth Racetrack, uh, this horse has been winning uh, quite a bit, albeit at, at a little bit of a lower rating. Um, and as you see there, uh, the knock against it, even here on the Brisnet forms, with their very simplistic, you know, beaten by weaker in last race. Yes, we get that. That was the Red Bank. It was a $102,000 race. So uh, this is a, uh, definitely a step up. Um, but as you see over there, um, and let me get this out of the way for you guys. Uh, this uh, did lack room, steadied. Uh, those are the, the comments that you see that the, that the race runner caught. So uh, possibly a little bit of trouble or still did finish second in that particular race. So, you know, possibly better things to come. And um, I did like the speed angle in the short race. And so I went with the four, nothing better. And I'm going to go ahead and hand off to Joe English. Yeah, Rich, you can stay right there. Uh, I wasn't concerned about the, being, about the horse getting beat by a weaker. Considering that last race was a mile, he's going to be cutting back to a distance he probably prefers. I actually like the fact that the horse got some stamina out of that because the horse that Steve's on, boats are rocking, and the horse on the rail, that's right, seem to be two rocket ships out of the gate. So I don't know that I want this horse battling with those those two and, and you know, being part of a three-horse pace brigade, which, you know, who knows if, if any of them will survive. I'd rather the horse be able to rate a little bit, come from just off the pace. So just like you, Rich, I'm on the four, nothing better. And there'll be nothing better to start this, big, this uh, sequence with a win here. Nothing better than four for me, right? What do you What do you like here? Um, I I decided to um take a shot with a horse that's um first time turf uh number five Uncle Ernie. He's got good sprint form. He's um he's actually show show speed. He, he can rate a little bit also. Very good speed figures, but the turf is a question. If he likes the turf, you know, I might be in the game here. So, um, I take a shot. Joel Rosario gets aboard. John Service, that's a plus. So I'll see what happens. You know, he's been out for a while. I'm not too worried about the layoff because um his first race he won by eleven. Book is maiden, so that's like a layoff race anyway. So um I like him eight to one, so I'll go with um Uncle Ernie. All right. Um... <clears throat> And we're going to move along to the next sequence here. It's an all stakes uh, sequence for us here on uh, Terminal Horse Racing. And this is race number 10. They're going six furlongs on the main track. It's the Gallant Bob Stakes. It's a grade two. The purse is $300,000. It's for three year olds only. And your morning line favorite is here in post number three. Provocateur, trained by Todd Pletcher and written by Irad Ortiz, is four to one on the Parks Morning Line, and unfortunately, in a really, really difficult race, I get to go first. So, um, I I struggled. Uh, I I had four different horses kind of in my you know in my orbit. I decided in the end, almost playing on the. Uh, Let's see, the historical nature of the of the race being called the Gallant Bob Stakes. And Gallant Bob was uh, a true champion who really put up a number of victories over on the East Coast. I, I think it was here at Parks uh, where he had most of his success. Um, and he was one of those freakish horses who had an incredible record. And so I decided to go with a horse who does seem to like uh, Parks. And in this case, it's Scaramouche. And maybe I just... You know, like saying that as well. Uh, John Velasquez is the jockey, and you get Guadalupe Preciado uh, as the trainer. Uh, but as you see here, 
The horse is uh, five out of six there at Parks. My highlighter going just crazy, uh, as you're seeing there. Um, and if you can see through all the yellow that's on the screen now, then you can also see that the horse is also two for three at this distance. Is moving up in class from the last start uh, here on uh, tournament horse racing. Uh, kind of an angle that we do like. Uh, and I do enjoy this angle uh, with the horse having that outside post. Uh, you can see uh, has had a, a good win streak, five out of eight lifetime, five out of six at parks. Um, and I thought the, the race set up nicely uh, for having John Velasquez aboard today. So I decided to go ahead and go with the 14 um, after having about five different scratch outs on my page, including the 14. Uh, Joe. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I too went a little bit away from, I went away from the ferrets and I went with the number, uh, oh, I think it's number 12. A lot of hope. This is 12. And there you go. 10 to 1 the morning line. Uh, trainer John Broff has a good percentage and obviously won two out of the last three with Jevian Toledo, who's the rider of this horse. And the ride, he's been the rider of this horse the last two times out and is obviously undefeated with, that, with Toledo aboard. Uh, the form is obviously really, really good right now. And based on the two last two races, it looks like he can be anywhere. You know, one from off the pace at Charlestown last time and one much closer to the pace at Laurel the time before that. And the one thing about three-year-olds is, you know, we've seen it, you know, for years and years when we watch the derby preps, three-year-olds can get really good really fast and they can stay good for, for quite a bit of time. So I'm hoping this guy can hold his form. I don't hate the outside post. He likes to win his five out of 10 lifetime. So give me 10 to one on a lot of hope with, Jevion Toledo. I don't, I, I'm trying to think of that. This may be the first time I've ever picked a horse ridden by Jevion Toledo in <laughs> however long we've been doing this. So I have a lot of hope in Jevion Toledo. So go get him. Right. <laughs> um, I'm on Witch's horse, 14. I had to go way to the, to the outside. <laughs> I don't know. They might be in a second here. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah, Scaramouch. Um, had a good, uh, he's stepping up in class, so, you know, but, you know, he's, um, he's likes to win, and he likes to track, and, you know, he's got Johnny V on, so, it's, you know, positive day, been working out well, and, um, I don't think the step up is, um, you know, it's, it's a little step up, it's not, you know, that, that deep, so, big jockey change, and, um, he'll get to see, you know, everybody, and you make a, he'll probably stay close to the pace, just trying to, hopefully, you see, he can tuck in a little bit and save some ground, but um, you know, usually six furlongs to go straight down for like a half a mile, so it shouldn't be a problem. He could just um, um, just stay in touch and you know make a move. So I like Scott Mooch. He's a good price, five to one. So and Preciado was a live race at Park, so he's one of the leading trainers there. So, um, Steve. Yeah, I'm on. I don't know. This is a tough race, but I ended up I ended up on the favorite. Provocateur could get away from my rat Ortiz and Todd Fletcher. <clears throat> There's a horse in the next race for you too, Steve. Well, I, well, I'm sure. I'm sure there is. Yes, yes. In fact, I think I might have picked that one too. <laughs> Love that. Uh, horse by into mischief. He's uh, uh, three one or no at the distance. In five races, so I'm done, done pretty well. One, one its last race in in Monmouth. So, yeah, yeah. Let's see if see if we can get on a roll. So going with the three, I read. Okay. <laughs> And we are going to go ahead and move along to what I believe is the co-feature for tomorrow's card there at Parks Racing. And I am correct. This is race number 11. 
They're going a mile and a sixteenth on the main surface. This is the Cotillion Stakes. It's a grade one. The purse is one million dollars for Philly three-year-olds only. And your morning line favorite is out here in post number six, Secret Oath, trained by D. Wayne Lucas and ridden by Luis Saez, two to one on the Parks morning line. And in the third leg here, Joe, you're going to go ahead and kick us off. Oh, good. You don't you don't have to move your mouse at all because Uh-oh. I, I, I looked at once I saw Secret Oath's name in the PPs, I was like, OK, let me look. There's nobody named Nest in here. And Nest is the only Philly who's beaten Secret Oath at all this year. So I, I'm, I'm going to take two to one. Uh, she's been facing the best Phillies in the country. Obviously, Nest is the top three year old Philly. In the land right now. And I, I'm hoping that maybe they're a little bit closer to the pace because I don't see a lot of pace in here. I see one horse who I looks like a confirmed front runner, and then a couple of horses that can chase. Maybe she needs to be a little bit closer, but you know she's she's just you know she's better than I, I think she's just better than these. She's been facing better, uh, even though it's a Grade One. It seems like maybe there's a little bit of class relief because Nest is killed. So give me the six. Right, no, no boys, no nest. <laughs> yeah. No boys, no nest. So no, pro- you would think no problem. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um. Well, you you mentioned a, a jockey trainer combo last week, so I was, <laughs> that's one for me. Um, number one, green up, Pletcher, I write our tees. Um, this horse mm-hmm. is four for four, definitely. You know, an acid test here, classing, uh, testing for class, and but she's been running well. So I mean, she's been you know winning by four, by five, by six, by three. So you know, let's see. I mean, the, the figures over there, you know, definitely Secret Oath's gonna be you know formidable, and you know, but um, my only thing about Secret Oath is that I know she hasn't won since the Kentucky Oaks, so maybe you know a little confidence there. Some of these horses know, you know, that they, they've been um facing these you know, nests and all these things so um you know and you know she has had seven races over this year so she you know she might be you know it's a lot of races for her so but i'm gonna go with the new shooter here and try you know plus you know, has a good thing with these sometimes with these horses you know like you said they get fast and they get good you know fast so uh she ran very well last time so i mean that's a really fast time so you know she's in form and you know let's see what happens you know she can handle these these if she if she can handle she go out, then, uh, you know, Baffert you know, has a horse here, so, you know, he does. So, you know, it'll be a good race for a million dollars. Green up for me at six to one. Steve? Yeah, yeah, he can leave it right there. Uh, me too. I'm on green up. Uh, Irad's going to have a big day for me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> More than capable. <laughs> yep. Undefeated horse. Yeah, let's go get him. But to those of you who are watching our show, or if you're watching the replay of our show, and things like that, I'm just going to tell you that two of the handicappers on our show are definitely wrong. Anyway. <laughs> Rich, <laughs> Rich, before, before we go further, it could be that all four of us could be wrong. Could be. That, that, that's, a, that's a possibility. He said Baffert's got a horse in there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Chad Bounce here. Don't forget him. Don't forget Chad Bounce. That's my yeah. second choice. That's a, poss- that's a possibility, <laughs> but there's definitely a, a reality that two of us are wrong. <laughs> At least and, two of us will be. Yeah. Anywho, um, I, I'm, I'm on secret oath uh, for all the same reasons that Joe said. Um, I, and, and you heard me kind of, you know, pipe in there and. Kind of offer my two my my two bits of yeah. There, there, there's no boys in this race, <gasps> and there's nobody named Nest in this race. Um, there shouldn't be any problem. Um, I am on the six secret oath. Throw our picks in there for us. That's the. It's funny because these are the last races where well, uh, last races going long that three year olds will be able to run against each other and go. Yeah, yeah, the restricted three-year-old. Yeah. That's why. That's why. It's why the the two races drew right. such great fields is because they know they're going to have to face older going forward, unless they decide to run on Saturday's opening day and run into right. the seven furlong race. Mm. For a million dollars, you know, hey, 
Well, that's too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't hurt. One mil, one mil. You know, that's good money if you can get it. Hmm. All right. I wouldn't know. Right. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> on, Why on, we're broke, guys. Yeah. On, on to the other co-feature. Um, a race, actually, that's become a staple here on uh, what was once three broke guys handicapping and is now just tournament horse racing. Uh, we've done the Pennsylvania Derby now for a, a number of years. I looked back at it the other day. It was like six or seven because California Chrome raced in this race. And so we, we actually you know, kind of took a look at it. Um, it's race number 12. Uh, they're going a mile and an eighth on the main track. Uh, this is the Pennsylvania Derby, grade one. Purse is a million dollars for three-year-olds only. And your morning line favorite is in post number eight. And that is Taiba. Trained by Bob Affert and Raiden by Mike Smith is five to two on the Parks morning line. And look at that, Ray. Because you're out there on the East Coast, because I know Parks is just a drive away for you and things like that. And I, you know, I, I saw your text this week and things like that. I say the uh, the pristine Pennsylvania Derby for you. You get first choice at this one. Well, I, I hope to see this live, so that's to be determined. But um, I have hopes. Uh, yes, this this um, this race has become very very, I mean, prestigious throughout the years. I mean, for the Breeders' Cup and all these things, and you know, all the good ones get here. I mean, I'm sure that um, you know the. The leader of the pack, I guess he can sit out this one because he doesn't need this race. But, um, you know, I I went. I'm 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 hoping in this race that there's going to be a lot of speed, and I see a few speed balls out here that can just go out there. I'm going to go with number one, Zandon on the rail. He's been battling. You know, he's been. You know, he's had some trip problems here and there. You know, you know. And he picks up Rosario, who actually broke his maiden with. So um, I'm hoping to get a better trip. Um, he'll be on the way out. He'll probably safe ground. Hopefully he can, you know, weave his way out and and um, get into the race a little earlier. I mean, he has shown, you know, speed at, like, I mean, top of stretch, he's been second, second, third, third. So he's, I, it seems to me he needs a little more finish. And I think Rosario could give him that. So, um, you know, it's a very good race. You know, Zanon is a great one winner, like, you know, a few others here. And um, I'm going to go with him. And um, he's, you know, he's 5-1, to one, so. It'll be Zanon for me. He looks like a two-distance horse. Mile and eight should be no problem, so. Some of these, some other horses are, you know, testing mile and eight, you know, and, and but, you know, he's definitely proven over the distance, so. Just need, I need a trip for him. I just need him to finish up the last, you know, few eighth of mile or. So, Zandon for me. Steve? Yeah. Man, this was another, this was a tough one. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Yeah. This is, I ended up on, uh, I ended up on, on the six, We the People. I couldn't get away from Flavian Pratt at 12 to 1 on a good horse. So, but yeah, horses, horses won a few times. Uh, Flavian Pratt's been on board uh, on one of his wins, <clears throat> but uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said I like the odds, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with We the People here. Rich, I no. <laughs> I'm up. I, I was just make sure I get your your pick documented before I started looking at mine, and because <laughs> I was I knew I was very close to you, and I'm gonna go back to my favorite so far for this year. Uh, and actually, I, I I will be honest and start, say that I started off on White Abario, uh, but I did like Cyberknife uh, all the way back in the Arkansas Derby, uh, which he won. Had a terrible Kentucky Derby, and since then I really have enjoyed watching this horse. Uh, he he did get beat, you know, quite decisively there by Epicenter. Uh, in that last race, um, but just before that, um, I do believe he he had set a, a track record uh, there yeah. at Monmouth uh, in the Haskell. Um, I, I honestly feel he he could be uh, the class of the three-year-olds. I would like to see him get another shot at Epicenter, uh, possibly at Breeders' Cup time. Uh, I'm not sure if that's, you know, in the cards at, at this point in time, uh, 
um, but he certainly did, you know, kind of catch my eye as that three-year-old, you know, possibly like, uh, and Joe and Ray, you guys can back me up with this, you know, kind of like I caught on to Gunrunner at, at the end of that particular year, and then he turned out to be that sensational four-year-old, um, and, and he's been very good as a three-year-old, uh, he's trained by Brad Cox, he's ridden by Florin Giroux, um, he is by Gunrunner, that's the same sire for Taiba, so, uh, we'll see what we get there, um, and I went with the five, Cyberness. Like they say, one one like your daddy, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, one like your pop. <laughs> well, Rich, unfortunately, he might get another shot at Epicenter in the British Cup Classic. Yes, but they just don't seem to be the same anymore. So, um, might, might that matter? Might that, I mean, unless they both decide to run in the British Cup Dirt Mile, I, you know, I, I don't, I, I can't see either one of them. Yeah, in the classic, yeah, they, they it, could have, it's, they could have um, a problem. It'd be really tough to beat flight line at this point. Second and third. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Something, something's <laughs> gonna happen. To, something's gonna have to happen to flight line in order, to, you know, in order to see him get beat. At least that's the way it looks so far. I mean, he's just, he's just otherworldly at this point. I mean, they're talking about him in the same breath as Secretariat. So, I mean, you, you can't, you can't do that with, with just or any other run of the mill three or four year old. So. Could he be a good four-year-old next year, Cyberknife? Absolutely. And Epicenter, the same. And Rich, we're obviously thinking a lot of like today. I'm on Cyberknife, too. I think he was, he's shown the last two races that he can come from off the pace as he did in the Haskell, or he could be on the pace as he, as he was in the, in the Travers. Uh, again, just, this, is, this is a nest thing. There's no Epicenter in here. So I, it's, since, the, since the Derby, he's been a different horse. And I just think he's, I just think he's better than these. Uh, yeah, he's got to beat Taiba for sure. But again, he's, I think he's a little bit more tactical and he can pretty much do whatever, whatever Orangeru wants to do. So again, like Rich, we're we're on three of the same horses tonight. So give me the five cyber <laughs> That's weird, man. It's the alcohol talking, I guess. <laughs> hey, you're not going to catch him like that, Joe. Well, Rich, I, Steve, I wasn't catching him anyway. He's like $200 ahead of me. There's no way I was catching him. Uh, unless, I'm, unless I'm picking 30 to 1 shots, I got no. I, I got pretty much no shot anyway. Right. So I, might, so I might as well at least try to keep pace with him so maybe I can win at least the quarter prize. You know? <laughs> There's the spirit. <laughs> All right. I want to thank uh, Kentucky for um, giving me that extra two cents of my winnings. That might mean something. Well, you keep note. Ray, 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 the Breeders' Cup is in Kentucky this year. Ain't gonna matter. Oh, okay. there, may be, <laughs> there may be more two cents. Uh, you're right. Yes, you're right. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, but then I was like, wait a minute, the Breeders' Cup's in Kentucky. Forget all that. Oh, <laughs> a lot of change. And Post time, post time for the sequence for anybody watching, anybody listening, is four o'clock Eastern, four o four Eastern, one o four Pacific. Adjust if you're in Central or Mountain Time Zone. I believe it's on TVG. Well, I'm sorry, FanDuel. Oh yeah, FanDuel TV. FanDuel TV, yes. FanDuel. <laughs> Not too popular in uh, New York for and, and and Steve, Steve, if do you want to give the weather report before we sign off? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Partly cloudy, low seventies. Should be a beautiful mm. day out there. And do you guys want to take a look at your picks here and just let me know? Did I get that all correct? Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Let me come on. Back. Some aces there. Playing poker. Yeah. All right. Anybody got anything they would like to? Uh, oops, sorry. Excuse me. Anybody got anything they would like to add before we conclude tonight? Uh, you know, Joe's got cocktails. Laheim. <laughs> Laheim. Um, next week, Rich is. I'm sorry. Which? Oh, let me check. Let me just take a quick peek. Uh, we, we, uh, I know you had it up earlier. I'm on my third cocktail. So uh, we will be at Santa Anita. Oh, look at that. Oh, there you go. Sweet Home, California. Santa Anita for the awesome against the Santa Anita and the Santa Anita Spring and then, Championships, and then the following week we got the England. Pick Four Wars and yeah, and the following exactly and then the uh, August October the first is uh, Santa Anita October the eighth is Keeneland, which includes Pick Four Wars, 
So we'll get Aqueduct, Keeneland, and Santa Anita all in the same week. Ooh. And then we get a break. And then we get a break. And then we'll, yeah, exactly. We'll get a break and we come back for Laurel. All right. Well, everybody, that's, uh, that's how we do it here on Tournament Horse Racing. Again, that's uh, one of the racing days that will include uh, 10 racing days during this final tournament of the year for us. We call it the Road to the Breeders' Cup. It'll actually lead us not only to the winner of this tournament, but actually who's going to be our year-end winner. And I will give you a hint. We are very close, um, at least three of us are, for that, that year-end winner position. All right? Um, speaking for Ray Torado and Steve Newsom and Joe English, my name is Rich Sharp. Our show is called Tournament Horse Racing, and it's brought to you by Broke Guys Handicapping. Good luck, everybody, and good night. Have a good night, all. All right, good night. Good night, guys.